Deep in the foothills of this mountain range, set in this beautiful landscape of low forested hills and fast flowing rivers, is a small community of Germans who have lived here for the last 50 years. But this is not Germany or even Europe. And these mountains are not the Alps, but the Andes in central Chile. Today it is known as Villa Baviera, though most people still call it by its original name, Colonia Dignidad, the Dignity Colony. But behind this idyllic facade hides a place where unspeakable things have happened. They put those girls out of their beds uh, at night, put them into the hospital, uh, and put electroshockers for cattle into their vaginas. Uh, long enough to, to sterilize them. Die haben mir Elektroschocks gegeben, um die Gedächtnislücken wieder zu machen, damit ich mich an möglichst wenig erinnern kann. Los abusos sexuales a, a niños en Colonia Dignidad era una práctica ritualizada, organizada y perfeccionada. El paraíso de un pedófilo. Its residents have revealed horrifying stories of child abuse, forced labor, torture, and killings. No conocía ni padre ni madre. Yo no podía dormir en las noches. Porque me sentía solo. For the last 25 years, I've been working in Latin America as a television journalist. I am half Chilean and know this country very well. The first time I came here was 23 years ago. Chile had just returned to democracy, so I assumed as a journalist, I had a right to come in here and ask questions. As I headed towards the entrance, I heard the sound of gunshots going off, and I realized suddenly that I was the target, that I was being warned to stay away. Ever since then, I've wanted to find out exactly what went on in Colonia Dignidad. Not only who was responsible for the abuse, but who covered it up for so long, and why? I knew that terrible things had happened here, but it wasn't until now that I discovered just how dark they were, nor how those who suffered unimaginable horrors for decades are still struggling for justice and to come to terms with their pain. Santiago, Chile, about four hours' drive away from Colonia Dignidad, is today home to Winfried Hempel, who was born in the colony. I met him two years ago. He had just started a lawsuit against the Chilean and German governments for complicity in the suffering of the victims of Colonia Dignidad. I realized that this was unprecedented, that no one had ever taken such a step. And Winfried's personal story was a shocking revelation, a window into what so many others who lived in the colony have gone through. His parents had suffered years of hardship and deprivation on the Eastern Front following the defeat of Germany in the Second World War. Then, in the late 50s, they met this man, Paul Schaeffer, an ex-male nurse in the Nazi army, who by then had turned into a Baptist preacher. Un personaje que a simple vista figuraba ser más grande de lo que es, pero de una apariencia oscura e intimidante, como que te atravesaba con tu, con, con, con tu mirada y eh, te para, paralizaba. 
I went to Germany where it all started to find out how Schiffer managed to convince people to join his flock, among them Winfried's parents. After World War II, all Germany was in a situation of moral defeat and disorientation. People looked for a straw to grasp at. To, to, they didn't have any uh, support, moral support. And they looked for preachers, uh, missionaries, and so on and so on. And Schäfer was one of those figures who attracted this uh, uh, people. Schäfer began his career as a self-proclaimed preacher here in this small northern German town. Things did not go well. The mothers of two small boys accused him of abusing their children. It was a serious charge, enough for authorities to issue a warrant for his arrest. Schäfer decided to flee to Chile, where despite or unaware of his arrest warrant, 300 of his followers joined him. He had to, to leave the country, and he left the country with all his flock, or, or most of the uh, part of his flock. And uh, Sheva told uh, his believers that communism, the Russians were going to occupy Germany, and they had to leave before. And they believed him. By 1962, Schäfer and his group had established themselves as a charity in central Chile. They set up a farm, a bakery, and even a state-subsidized hospital that offered free treatment to the local population, all with the blessing of the Chilean authorities. Schäfer had his own very particular vision of how his community should be organized. Schäfer pretendía un régimen eh, de, las, de, la, de los primeros tiempos bíblicos en el cual existía supuestamente una comunidad de bienes eh, en el cual todos compartían todo y no existía, la, no existía la familia, sino que eran una especie de pastores que guiaban a su gente. Families were split up separated into groups by age and gender. Babies were taken from their mothers at birth and raised in a communal nursery. They had no idea who their siblings were. All adults were known as uncle or aunt. Schäfer was called in German permanent oncle, or permanent uncle. Winfried did not know who his parents were till he was 10 years old. Con el tiempo uno se da cuenta que uno de los que uno denominaba tíos tenía un contacto más cercano y siempre a escondidas, pero sí más cercano a uno y que cuando venía a ver los niños que estaban en el jardín y las niñas por otro lado, tenían una cierta preferencia, pero disimulada. Y de ahí con el tiempo uno se da cuenta que eh, quién era que el tío Heinrich y la tía Renate en definitiva eran mi padre y mi madre respectivamente. By the age of seven, he was sent not to school, but to work, as were all the other children. It was a harsh, unrelenting regime, with Schäfer in control, helped by a few other members who formed the hierarchy. Yo empecé a trabajar a los siete años de edad. Trabajo duro en el campo, que era un trabajo que se prolongaba de lunes a lunes, desde temprano en la mañana hasta tarde en la noche, eh, con comidas retardadas, eh, con poco sueño, eh, trabajo forzado, y el que no acataba las órdenes era objeto de golpes, otros castigos como encierros, etc. Schäfer was creating a community that obeyed and followed his every command, and where everyone looked up to the permanent uncle as a god. For instance, Schäfer had bloodhounds, dogs, and he unleashed them, let them attack children, and at the last moment, he, put the, he called them back. So he was the, the attacker and the saver at the same time. All this control allowed Schäfer a free run to do as he wished, not only with the adults, but also with the children. When I was like, Seis, siete años, la primera vez yo eh, conocí a Schäfer. 
Werner Schmidtke was two years old when his mother brought him to the colony from Germany. Like all the others, he was separated from her and raised with other young boys by a group aunt. One night when he was about seven years old, he was told that Schaeffer wanted to see him in his bedroom. Suave, muy, muy bajito conmigo y me hizo cariño y como, como un padre que, que ama a su niño. Yo no pensaba nada, pero era para mí una persona ajena. Yo era, tenía mucha vergüenza. Entonces pasó algo que me chocó. ¿Por qué? porque él me, me tiró a mi brazo, me tiró más abajo, y al fin yo sentía algo que, que quería que yo no quería. Eh, con, con fuerza me tiró, yo como chico, no podía eh, eh, ponerme en contra. Y hasta que yo... Eh, eh, Tenía contacto con su pene. Los abusos sexuales a, a niños en Colonia Dignidad era una práctica ritualizada, organizada y perfeccionada. El paraíso de un pedófilo que tenía niños sin posibilidad de ser auxiliados, de ser protegidos, porque en Colonia Dignidad no existía familia, padres ni nadie que los pudiera ayudar. El abuso sexual de Schaeffer era brutal, violento. Eh, podía abusar de tres o cuatro niños en un día, diferentes niños. The children Schaeffer abused, like Werner, were young and vulnerable. They had been kept apart from their families. They could not turn to anybody for help or protection. So when he was raping you, did you think that that was wrong. Yeah, eso es muy raro, porque yo era confundido. Yo no sabía. Yo no sabía, yo, a mí me, me hizo rabia eso. Yo no quería eso. Y eh, no, me, no me gustaba tampoco. Y, eh, pero no, no podía poner dónde. Porque una parte él lo castigó y era malo todo. Pero él dijo que él puede hacerlo. Y yo cuando tengo ganas para algo que yo voy a decírselo, con él sí, pero nunca fue. Y ese fue mi problema, por eso yo tenía que sufrir mucho. Werner would not submit to Schaeffer's demands willingly. So, with others like him, he was taken to this building and subjected to experiments meant to suppress all sexual instinct. Después, eh, un, unos minutos después de eh, matarle, venía una otra persona, no bajó el eh, eh, pantalón de nudo. Escuchaba grito de otro niño fuerte. Entonces, a mí también, ahora yo sabía por qué. A mí me, me tocó también con un, una corriente donde se, se compraron en Alemania. Aquí esa ese cosita que, donde pican los animales. Eran bien fuertes. Y lo, lo chocaron así en, en, en la parte aquí, en, en la parte blanda, eh, en la cabeza, en, en, eh, y también en, en, la, en lo que se llama en, en testículos. Yeah, testículos. Such was the extent of Schaeffer's power that not even the children of some of his closest colleagues were spared. Some of the children who were abused by Paul Schaeffer were actually the children of the leadership, weren't they? No hacían nada. Sabían, sabían y no hacían nada. Why did they allow it? Cobardía. Cobardía y los privilegios que ellos tenían a cambio de eso eh, aguantaron todo. All this begs the question. Why would so many people choose to subordinate themselves to Schaeffer's will? One explanation was that there was a complex web of emotional connections at the colony between the victims and the victimizers. 
imagínense estar una semana sin comer, estando sentado a la mesa con todos los demás que comen. Y pobre de él que tomaba una, eh, una amiga y le daba algo, se, lo castigaban. Entonces, todos los que comían en el fondo eran cómplices eh, y viceversa. De esa manera fomentaba eh, la interacción de víctimas con victimarios. En el fondo, el que era en ese momento la víctima, hacía victimarios respecto de la víctima y así. Era un, un círculo perverso que funcionaba así todo el día. Schaeffer reinforced his power through an elaborate system of mutual betrayal. Esa es la sala de reuniones religiosas, mm -hmm. donde la gente se confesaba a diario con Schaeffer, en grupo, muchas veces en público, y la gente hacía rezos públicos, y uno tenía que rezar en público y confesar sus pecados delante de todos y delante de Schaeffer todas las noches, y que era una cosa realmente horripilante. En ocasiones se podía poner a alguien al medio y pegarlo. You saw that yourself? So, yo vi eso. Y muchas veces. Muchas veces. Y después el que iba a ser pegado tenía que rezar frente a todos, a Dios, a pedir perdón por haber sido tan pecaminoso. Y más, haber sido ob eh, objeto de la necesidad de tener que castigarlo. O sea, era un pecado en sí. By the late 60s, the colony was highly efficient making money for Schaeffer and his inner circle. The workers only had one rest day a year and never received a penny. Schaeffer used the funds to acquire more land and to turn it into a well-fortified enclave with barbed wire fencing, watchtowers, motion sensors, and cameras camouflaged in trees and stones and hidden bunkers. Como niño chico ya sentía que algo extraño había y aquí habían matorrales, etcétera, y ahora hace cuatro años vine a inspeccionar el lugar y encontré eso. ¿Qué le voy a mostrar? Mira. All these elaborate measures meant that escape from the colony was almost impossible. The colony was in effect a state within a state, where the laws of Chile did not apply. En algunos momentos en, en, en los cuales eh, los castigos eran muy fuertes, las, eh, los trabajos muy, muy fuertes, Pensé en arrancarme, sabiendo que no iba a llegar lejos, pero que sí uno podía quizás descansar un poco rato o pasear por último sin que nadie te supervisara todo el rato. Fue una niña triste. Yo me recuerdo que eh, yo lloraba frecuentemente. Por ejemplo, en... por ejemplo, en... Aunque uno no conocía ni padre ni no conocía ni padre ni madre, yo no podía dormir en las noches porque me sentía solo. Anyone looking at this clip showing a young Winfried could hardly recognize the childhood he describes. The colony worked so well at concealing this reality. Psychologically, Schaefer was a genius. He wasn't really an idiot. He, couldn't even, he didn't even know to write, to write well, and he didn't read well. He was mainly illiterate. But psychologically, he was really good in manipulating uh, people. At the colony, the abuse, the torture, the control were all well hidden. Schaeffer carefully choreographed the image of the colony. To a visitor, everything looked perfect. A slice of Germany in a foreign land. A happy, cheerful Christian community. It was the impression Schaeffer was keen to promote as he set about establishing good links with the local police, judges, and Chile's powerful right-wing groups. In order to keep a fanatic community together, you need an enemy. For Sheva, this enemy was the devil. They believed in the devil and communism at the same time. So everybody who criticized anything was a communist or inspired by the devil. 
So they had this biblical concept of the world, which was bad, and us, the holy community, which was good. But in reality, there were no external enemies. Schaeffer and his most trusted lieutenants were obsessed with controlling their own people. Any dissent was quickly crushed. They had built a hospital and used it to obtain drugs and medicine. Gudrun and Wolfgang Müller were among the earliest settlers. When they protested about conditions in the colony, they were force-fed with drugs, pills that were normally meant to treat epilepsy and schizophrenia. Weil ich ja schon so viele durchgemacht habe, wenn ich meinen Mund aufgemacht habe, dass ich dann bestraft wurde, eben mit Medikamenten, mit Elektroschocks, mit eingesperrt sein. Ich war zum Beispiel sieben Jahre im Krankenhaus. The point of using psychotropic uh, medications uh, with uh, uh, effects upon the mind in ordinary people uh, has been historically to have some kind of control over how people think, uh, feel, uh, or react. Some of these techniques of social control were leftovers from Schaeffer's Nazi past. And he was also by now in contact with some prominent ex-Nazi fugitives living secretly in South America. One of them was Joseph Mengele, the angel of death, the man responsible for torture and experiments on prisoners in Auschwitz. Another ex-Nazi who was a welcome guest at Colonia Dignidad was Walter Rauf, the man responsible for creating mobile gas chambers that led to 100,000 deaths. Era evidente que era un, entre otras actividades que desarrollaba era un excelente reducto, un excelente refugio por lo hermético que era para recibir a refugiados estos nazis que andaban prófugos de la justicia internacional. In a bold gesture of defiance, Walter Rauf's German comrades, in true Nazi fashion, openly saluted him at his funeral in Santiago. In September 1973, the democratically elected government of President Salvador Allende was overthrown in a coup led by General Augusto Pinochet. Thousands were killed in what would become one of the darkest hours in Chilean history. Now, Colonia Dignidad and Paul Schaeffer were all set to play their part for the first time on a national level. The military government and the colony each found something they needed in the other. Paul Schaeffer needed new political allies and protection. And Pinochet's agents, who were versed in only the most crude forms of torture, wanted someone to teach them the more sophisticated methods of interrogation. Today, the streets and squares of the Chilean capital, Santiago, show a country that is prosperous and peaceful. Forty years ago, in 1973, these same streets were witnesses to a ruthless crackdown by the Chilean military under General Pinochet against the supporters of the democratically elected socialist president. Colonia Dignidad was drawn into the conflict. Schaeffer was a staunch supporter of the general and offered the colony and its facilities to serve the dictatorship. Colonia Dignidad was turned into a torture center. General Pinochet and Paul Schaeffer shared a common hatred of communism. So the enclosed colony became a place not only to torture suspected opponents of the dictatorship, but also to practice experiments against the prisoners. Pinochet's uh, personal secret service, Dina, used hidden torture camps. It was far off Santiago. It had originally a big fence around it. Schaefer controlled his own people very strictly. It had a hospital, which is necessary if you torture people. It had guest rooms. It had a radio station to communicate with Santiago and so on. 
uh, conditions were simply ideal. One of those who was taken there was Luis Peebles. Today, he is a well-known psychiatrist at a hospital in a working-class district of Santiago. Thank you so much for receiving us. In 1975, he was a young medical student, a member of a militant left-wing movement, when he was picked up by the Chilean security agency and interrogated, initially at a military base, but then moved to Colonia Dignidad. El método de poner los electrodos fue extraordinariamente minucioso. Es decir, me pusieron electrodos por todo el cuerpo, ¿eh? desde eh, debajo de las uñas de los pies, en las manos, en los tobillos, en los genitales, introduciéndolo por, eh, por el pene, introduciéndolo dentro del ano, eh, introduciéndolo dentro de la boca, la nariz. Eh, entonces, todo este tipo de, de sofistificación, eh, de prepar, preparación para, la, para el interrogatorio con corriente, era, era algo fuera, completamente fuera de lo común. Peebles was kept here, in this underground chamber at Colonia Dignidad. Durante la tortura, se corría el casco y yo podía ver a las personas. En un momento dado, se abrió para atrás así y yo vi directamente a, a las personas que estaban allí y, y, y vi a Paul Schaeffer directamente. Peebles was one of the few to have got out alive. Scores of others who were brought to the colony simply disappeared. Dozens of bodies were discovered in a mass grave 20 years later. Around the same time, in another part of the colony, Winfried was growing up totally oblivious to what was going on around him. Jamás escuché la radio, jamás vi un diario, salvo recortes que nos mostraban muy veladamente, y jamás vi televisión, salvo ciertas noticias grabadas que la mostraban a la comunidad que decía relación con el régimen de Pinochet y temas políticos para adoctrinarnos a favor de Pinochet. Schaeffer made sure that his flock was kept isolated from the world around. And this isolation was reinforced by the geography of the colony, making any escape extremely difficult. But people did escape. Some sought refuge at the German embassy, and incredibly were actually sent back to the colony. The embassy in the early days of Colonia Dignidad had a close relationship with Schaeffer. It even provided him with a diplomatic number plate. But in 1984, three of Schaefer's closest followers, fed up with the abuse, succeeded in escaping to Germany. There, they accused Schaefer of keeping people against their will under a regime of slavery and violence. Schaefer was facing another problem. The community was dwindling in numbers and with a very low birth rate, his supply of young boys was running out. He decided to open the colony up to the local population. La colonia de Nida aprovechó la admiración de los chilenos en general eh, a la disciplina y el orden alemán, a la limpieza, la pulcritud, la belleza de eh, lo que en Colonia de Nida se construyó, incluso el coro, la orquesta de música. Todo era perfecto. Y un, una aspiración, casi un privilegio, era que un niño chileno fuera recibido por los alemanes. Eran, eran abusos muy específicos. Fueron abusos muy específicos. Siempre fueron abusos en, en su vehículo, en lugares específicos dentro del fondo, sin que nadie viera. Él tomaba ciertos resguardos. Era una mente enferma, por lo tanto, igual la mente enferma es astuta. Tomaba cierto resguardo. Did Paul Schaeffer make you do things against your will? Exactamente, muchas veces. Y, pero sí había que acceder a hacerlas por un tema de que era el tío, el uncle. In 1995, this woman's son had the courage to tell her that Schaeffer had raped him. 
She, fearing the power and reach of Paul Schaeffer, did not go to the local lawyer. Instead, she went 400 kilometers away to Santiago. Lo que me decidió tomar el caso fue que si un niño de 12 años que había escapado de Colonia Dignidad estaba dispuesto a mantener su denuncia, a buscar ayuda para sus amigos, para otros niños que estaban en Colonia Dignidad, como abogado éticamente no podía eh, sino ayudar a ese niño y enfrentarme como él a la Colonia Dignidad. By now, a democratic government had replaced General Pinochet. The new president was keen to go after Paul Schaeffer. Chilean authorities were now actively investigating conditions at Colonia Dignidad. It was only after Pinochet left power that Schaeffer's support system began to collapse. It wasn't communism that brought down his carefully constructed fortress, as he'd always feared. It was the return of democracy to Chile. Frightened that he would face criminal charges, Paul Schaeffer fled, just as he had done nearly 40 years earlier. Schaeffer's inner circle continued to assert its hold over the colony. But with investigators on their heels, they had to make changes to cover their tracks. It was at this time that Winfred and others like him, who were now of legal age, were taken out of the colony to prevent authorities from questioning them. Fue increíble, o sea, yo estaba parado en la calle Los Ángeles, fuera de la colonia, con 20 años de edad, con una mentalidad psicológica de un niño de 8 años. Yo estaba frente a una puerta automática que se abría por primera vez que nunca lo había visto en mi vida. De repente vi un semáforo de cómo se funciona el tráfico en la calle a los 20 años de edad. Es como salir como Mowgli a los 20 años de la selva, una cosa absolutamente insólita e increíble que eso haya pasado en pleno siglo XX, en el año 97. He was lucky. The family he was sent to live with was shocked by his story and helped him overcome the years of neglect and ignorance. He had never gone to a proper school. He couldn't speak Spanish, but he was eager to make up for lost time and was able to get himself into this university to study law. Para que mis compañeros de universidad no me molestaran con preguntas sobre colonia y mía y mi procedencia, dije que soy un ciudadano que vino de Alemania a estudiar en Chile. Y así pasé desapercibido durante los primeros años de la universidad, pero obviamente con el tiempo mis amigos más cercanos eh, supieron que nací eh, y crecí en la colonia y mía y empezaban a hacer eh, las pre típicas preguntas incómodas. For Werner, life was also about to change. At the colony, he had met Catarina, a young Chilean woman. She had been adopted by the colony as a baby and brought up there speaking only German. But records of her adoption were never found. Weil es für mich wichtig ist, dass man wirklich, dass ich wirklich weiß, wer meine Eltern sind und and that I also know the whole history and the background of it. Why it was done. Or 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 why it was done. Ustedes pueden casarse. Y ese problema, todo ese problema de Schaeffer, que él es el, el, el maldito, que él es el, el, el que... Ah, ese para mí yo no podía entender primeramente, pero después me abrió siempre más los ojos. Y después ya yo me decidí de, para ella, la chilena. Hasta hoy día yo estoy contenta con ella. After they married, they left the colony and now live in Germany. With Schaeffer now gone, the sexual abuse came to an end. But the controls and use of drugs by his accomplices to suppress people's will remained as before, more than a decade after Chile had returned to democracy. Schaeffer had disappeared. 
there were even rumors that he had slipped back into Germany. It wasn't the Chilean police, but Hernan Fernandez and a Chilean journalist acting on a tip-off in 2005 who tracked down Schaefer, hiding in a small farm a few hours' drive from the capital of neighboring Argentina. Fearing Schaefer would be alerted by his contacts in Chile's police and judiciary, they kept the information from the Chilean authorities until the last minute to allow Argentine police and Interpol to arrest him. When I asked former Chilean president Ricardo Lagos why it had taken a journalist and a lawyer to track down Schaeffer, he denied that his government had been reluctant to go after him. Because what they built was an state, and a small state within the Chilean state. This is what it was. And, 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 and to have that and to destroy that was, wasn't an easy task. Schaeffer was extradited to Chile charged with sexual abuse of 25 minors and sentenced to 20 years in jail. With Schaeffer behind bars, the Chilean authorities finally started extensive investigations at Colonia Dignidad. In 2005, they discovered a stockpile of arms, machine guns, grenades, even rocket launchers. And then came the reports that chemical and biological weapons, including sarin gas, had been produced at the colony during the Pinochet years. Today, even 23 years after the return of democracy, we still don't have all the facts about what happened inside Colonia Dignidad. Some 28,000 files that were found inside detailing everything that occurred there are being kept under lock and key here at police intelligence headquarters. So the question is, what is the Chilean state still hiding? Existió un arsenal de armas químicas que aún existe. Según, How do you know that? Aún, que aún existe este arsenal de armas químicas por antecedentes recientes, de, de años recientes, en que se ha dado la alerta que es un peligro para los colonos que viven aún en Colonia Dignidad, porque Paul Schaeffer ordenó mover las armas, las armas de guerra que fueron encontradas, pero las armas químicas no han sido encontradas. El gas salín no es una especulación, es una constatación. Do you think that the Chilean state, that you, that this country will ever really know everything that happened in Colonia Dignidad? Well, it took so many years. It has been so long, the secrecy and the way that they behave. I don't think that the whole story has been told. Paul Schaeffer died in 2010 in prison. He left behind a terrible legacy of shattered and destroyed lives, of many unanswered questions. Chile has moved on. It is now a modern democracy, but the transition to that democracy has often been tempered by fear of provoking the still powerful army and its activities in Colonia Dignidad. Today, what was Colonia Dignidad is called Villa Baviera. Its gates are now open, so it's hard to believe that there are still people living here, unless you understand that for many, it's not a welcoming world outside. It's a stigma to have been in Colonia in Nia, and the one who was in the Colonia is many times object of bullying, of jokes, of jokes, y todo tipo de preguntas más o menos impertinentes. In Villa Baviera, there is now a German restaurant and a hotel, both part of an effort to transform this place into a tourist resort, a center for rest and recreation. But for those who lived here through years of torture, abuse, and misery, for those who were killed and buried in mass graves, there is no memorial, no placard, not even a sign. It is as though this place is trying desperately not to come to terms with the past, but to erase it. There are some, though, who refuse to allow that to happen. Porque una cosa es ser víctima de un delito y otro que el delincuente cometa el delito a vista y paciencia de autoridades que tienen el deber de garante para con la víctima. 
After finishing university, Winfried became a lawyer, and today he works for one of the leading law firms in Santiago. He has, over the last few years, managed to persuade 120 ex-members of the colony to file a lawsuit against the governments of Chile and Germany. La demanda persigue dos fines. Un fin monetario, por supuesto, en el sentido de asegurarle que pasen de manera digna el resto de su vida las víctimas de colonia y dignidad. Y la otra, por supuesto, que es un fin moral. Porque aquí no basta con que el Estado, tardíamente, 50 años después, llegue y se dé con una piedra en el pecho y diga, mira todo lo que pasó dentro de la colonia, que no sabíamos, pobre gente, y se dé la vuelta y se vaya, en circunstancias que ya sabido, no en el año 2005, sino en el año 60, ya lo que pasaba en la colonia y se hizo el sordo, el ciego y el muro. I can understand you suing the Chilean state, but what about Germany? What does Germany have to do with this? Cuando un alemán sale del territorio nacional, tiene garantías, ciertas garantías de asistencia que debe dar el Estado en el extranjero, sobre todo si uno es víctima de crímenes gravísimos como los pasados en la, ocurridos en Colonia Dignidad. I wanted to find out if the German authorities knew what had been going on at the colony. When Amnesty International published uh, its report on torture and colonial dignidad in 77, uh, the government and the embassy had documents in their hands to, to investigate, to carry on, and they didn't believe. The ambassador gave the colony the uh, advice to go to court against uh, Amnesty International. Nearly all the settlers at Colonia Dignidad kept their German nationality. Many have returned here to Germany and received pensions from the government. Gudrun and Wolfgang lived in the colony for nearly 30 years. Physical and forced drug abuse have left him severely disabled. The younger victims all tell me they suffer from physical disabilities from years of forced labor. Winfried is also in the process of getting as many victims as possible of those who now live in Germany to back his lawsuit. I think that it's the only thing that we want for us, not only for me, for all of us who came out of here, who survived that. The only thing that remains is to fight, to say the truth, to fight for Llegar, ojalá, a ese punto que, por lo menos, la justicia, o sea, la, la verdad, o sea, la justicia, el, 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 el juicio, eh, que, que salga, que nos dan una indemnización. En febrero de 2013, five of Schaefer's closest accomplices were finally sent to prison for up to 11 years. But another, Hartmut Hopp, fled Chile before being sentenced and turned up here in the German city of Krefeld. The German constitution forbids a national from being extradited. So he is able to live here as a free man, just a few kilometers away from Werner. He has a lot of guilt and he knows that. And I talked personally with him before he came here. He knows a lot more than you think. What I find extraordinary is that so many people who suffered for years at Colonia Dignidad have returned to Germany, to this town. Victims and their former persecutors living next to each other and worshiping together at this church under the same pastor. Some of them stick together because uh, they say, I forgive you. Uh, this preacher tells them, look to the future, forget the past and forgive each other. So that's how they can survive. The past, though, still casts a long, dark shadow over the lives of those who have been scarred by Colonia Dignidad. Back in Chile, Winfried is trying to establish a relationship with his parents. He 
has come to visit his father, who still lives in the colony. Winfried has tried to overcome the horrors and fears that growing up in Colonia Dignidad have left him with. And he has managed to convince many of the victims of the colony to unite, to put aside their shame and finally voice their pain and outrage. And for me, it's difficult to accept that a monster like Paul Schaeffer was able to destroy so many young lives over such a long period of time with such impunity. That so many Chilean governments have been at times complicit and at others grossly negligent is unforgivable. The court here will decide if claims of the 120 victims of Colonia Dignidad are valid. If so, it would be the first ever gesture of guilt on the part of the Chilean state. And it would be a recognition of the long struggle for justice that many have been waiting for for more than 50 years. Today, Chile is well on its way to coming to terms with its past. It is acknowledging the years of dictatorship, of repression and the killings. But for the victims of Colonia Dignidad, it is a process that is just beginning.